Welcome to the Marvel Alliance podcast, where we cover anything and everything to do with the Marvel Universe. From comics, TV, and movies, we will go from Earth-616 to the Mojoverse to, to the TVA in order to bring the Marvel Universe right to you. I'm the man without fear, Chris. I'm your friendly neighborhood, Brent. Alliance Assemble, Symbol. Volume 209, another episode of X-Men 97 to break down. And uh, yeah, this, this is definitely one to... Uh, you know, we're going to have some thoughts on. Yep, I've got some thoughts on it. We should go ahead and point out that uh, Travis Hines is not with us this evening. He's got some family obligations he's taken care of. But, uh, you know, he's on he's on dad duty right now. He is. But, and he's making the, He made the right decision. Absolutely. He made the right decision. Um, but, you know, don't don't worry. I'm sure I'm sure he'll be back before this run of X-Men is over. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So how has your week been, Brent? You know, it's been all right. I can't. Nothing super exciting. It's just been busy. Just one of those where it's like something happens at work. I finish it and immediately right after it, something else happens at work. And it's just random weird stuff. Like yesterday, I texted my wife. I'm like, today has been a day of just weird stuff. And just whatever. It, you know, it makes her an interesting day. It makes her a quick day. So I don't mind it every now and then. What about you? Yeah. Yeah, this week, you know, last week I was starting to come down with something, and man, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I don't know what it was, achiness, cough, wasn't COVID, never got a fever or anything like that, but it's been lingering and lingering. I'm, Y'all don't may or may not know this about me. I'm a workhorse. I don't know the word of necessarily. I'm a stubborn mule. I, I work, and I don't like being a burden to people, so... Yeah, I burned the candle on both ends, so that was that was uh, my body telling me we, we've had enough. So it's been uh, a, a long recovery week. So, so hopefully by next week I'll be back back in working order and making some hopefully uh, a little bit better choices. But again, end of the year is coming up pretty soon. Even though it's like April, but you and I are in the same business. You know, we got like two more months. Man, for for me, that's the. Uh... The, the first, third, and fourth weeks of May are <laughs> yeah. like, just basically just the month of May. Like I, The first few yeah. days of May will be all right, but then May hits, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be swamped until September. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, it's rough, but I did find out I'm, I'm actually uh, getting to go to a conference in Orlando in June, so that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll that'll be awesome. That that's yeah. it's always well. I guess I can't say it's always fun to go to conferences, but there, if you're going to be at a conference, you know, Orlando, there are a lot worse places to go. Yeah, than Orlando. this is a pr- this is a pretty uh, pretty uh, conference I had been to actually as a a school presenter at. So I, this time I get to go as just an attendee, so this will be fun. But anyways, we got an episode of breakdown. We got actually uh, some pretty uh, surprising news that dropped this week as well. So we did, but, we did. But let us get into all of that after we do our lovely network plugs. So we are part of the Geek Ultimate Alliance network with a wide with seven shows covering the wide range of geek and nerdum. To see, to see the full schedule, check out the show notes below and subscribe to the Geek Ultimate Alliance network on Twitter at GUA Pod Network so you know when all the shows drop. We also have a Patreon, so if you want to throw a couple of shekels our way, we've got two tiers. We've got our dollar tiers, our tip jar to say, hey, you think we're doing a good job? And then we've got our $5 tier with ad-free episodes, early access episodes, and Patreon exclusive shows. In our first show on the Patreon, where you can watch this all day, the Marvel Alliance Infinity Saga rewatch. Twenty four episodes are up there, and then our newest show, Tales from the House of X, dropped our first episode last week, which was Deadpool. Yes. So check that out. We've got the DC Alliance guys looking at all the uh, DC through the years. They just dropped their most recent episode of V for Vendetta. Joe in his multiverse minutes, he's got a new series, the Disney Drops, looking at all the animated movies of Walt Disney, and he just dropped a recent episode on Fantasia. That some some of the I like his I like what he's doing with it. I like all the behind the scenes stuff he goes into with it. So it's 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 definitely a lot of fun. So yeah, then sure. uh, but yeah, so we got a lot of great back content out there. So patrons, we want to thank you. Can't do this without your support. But if you're not a member of our Patreon, go to www.patreon.com backslash GUA network so you can get all that lovely content. And last but certainly not least, we want to thank our official sponsor, organicpricebooks.com for your omnibus hardcover collect edition needs. JP and the crew at OPB have got it going on with excellent customer service, immaculate packaging, ships around the world. Got all these new final order cutoffs, Punisher Max by Jason Aaron, 
Extinction Agenda coming into omnibus form. Again, Ghost Rider 2099. I'm just sorry, but this 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 cover right here of Ghost Rider 2099, I mean, it's just a sick cover. It's a good one, for sure. Yeah. May not have been a great series, but gosh, see, you can do a great Ghost Rider cover. But use that code MARVELGUA at checkout to get $2 off every single order. I want to thank them for being an official sponsor. And I need to uh, say got a recent pickup from them. Volume 2 of Spider-Man 2099. Speaking of nice covers. Yeah, that is, that is a very, very sweet cover. Is that the old Peter David run? Oh, yeah. This is the conclusion of like his It's got to be that run. thick. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it, it's thicker than a Snickers bar, as my friend Omar would say. There you go. <laughs> thicker yep. than a Snickers. <laughs> yep. So, like yeah, that. you can also pick that up at uh, Organic Price Books. Use that code MarvelGUA. So, all right. Let us and uh, Chris Evans in the chat. David's in the chat. Welcome, gentlemen. All right, Brent. Episode four, Motendo slash Life Death Part One. So we knew this was going to be a uh, an interesting one, just because obviously, just by the title alone, we figured we were getting two kind of separate episodes into one. Something that uh, you see animated shows do a lot. X Men, the original series, was not was not necessarily known for doing at all so i feel like you see that a lot in kid shows now yep. at least nowadays you do right and like two two different episodes three different smaller episodes in one block of time and that's exactly what this one was it was mm -hmm. two different episodes um and i'm probably gonna sound more negative than i really felt about it I, I will tell you the first one I was kind of eh on. It had some cool visuals. It had a mm -hmm. couple cool nostalgia things, but overall it made me feel pretty bland towards it. Um, probably because the character I focused on is just not one of my favorite characters. I don't mind them in group settings, but individually I'm like, eh, it's all right. Um, the second half I enjoyed quite a bit more, um, but that's a character who I do like more and I'm much more interested in what they have going on right now. Yeah, I'm with you on uh, Motendo. You know, I'm not a fan of the antagonist in it. It's, it, I mean, the antagonist itself is is one that is meant to be annoying and just you just wanted someone to punch him in the face and just be over with it <laughs> at that point. But the the visuals, yeah, I, I did like the the homages with video games and just different things, including stuff I remember playing as a kid. So. <laughs> You can definitely tell, I mean, we'd said this over and over again, but the tips of the hat, the nods to our generation that are playing these types of things, it's just like, yeah, I, I smile a lot throughout that, that episode. It, it was just a a a interlude, as I, I would call it, before we head into Life, Death, Part 1. This is one that I felt I would have much, re I mean... Wait till we see, because we'll get Life Death Part Two not next week, but the week after. Just mm -hmm. Life Death Part Two. It 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 probably was one of those situations where they felt that we have too much to do Life Death in just one episode, but we don't have enough to make it two. You know, it, that's exactly how it felt. It felt like neither of these stories there was enough for two. Um, I, I almost would have preferred they just like enough for individuals extended out the Life Death part and. Mm -hmm. But that's not the route they went with it. They're, they're toying with it. I'm a, I, I respect the choice to to toy with the storytelling format. You know, uh, when you when you look at the actual runtime and stuff, it wasn't that much shorter than one of the classical series episodes. Yeah, and so it it kind of worked from that standpoint. And I think you know some people. I I, I more heard more complaints from some really diehards of the of X Men in the comics at that point with the uh last week's episode because of how big the inferno story what inferno story was and how much they just truncated it into one episode and sure. as always our our, our kind of comeback is like well the show was kind of really known for that outside of the phoenix saga most of the most of the arcs were usually just two episode arcs if they couldn't be mm -hmm. contained into one. So yeah, they, uh, yes, they, absolutely. It, it, it was truncated, but the show, I agree. The show has always done that. And for the most part, I think they pull it off more often than not. Yeah. And again, when we know the, the season finale will be three parts, we're going to get kind of our, our, our major long form one at the end of the season. So we're at the midpoint right now. Yeah. Very close. So, but all right, well, I think we're done tiptoeing around, so let's take our first yeah. ad break before we get into spoilers. So, listeners, these ads help keep the lights on in the Geek Ultimate Alliance Network. 
We don't get to choose what ads come on. Give that three count before they come on. Three, two, one. We'll be right back. And we are back. All right, so spoiler warning for everyone. If you haven't seen it, tune out now. All right, so the intro, uh, something I forgot last week. There was a character missing from the intro credits, Brent. This week? Last week. Last week, who? I don't remember. Storm was not oh. featured in the intro credits. Yep. I, I, I got that pointed out to me uh, by a listener, and they said, you, you missed one. I said, you're right. I was so busy looking for what they added because they've been changing the credits. Yes. Every yeah. every episode so far. X Factor was in this one, for example, mm-hmm. um, which I enjoyed seeing. But I, I was so busy looking for what they added. I didn't even think about what they might have taken out. Yeah, they took out Storm last week. Storm is back in this week. Uh, Ju- they added Jubilee facing off against Mojo with Longshot off to the side, uh, referring to that earlier episode from the original series. Um, and Mojo was actually created, just a little background, since we're going to be talking a lot about Mojo. Uh, Mojo was created by Anna Sente and uh, artist Art Adams, making his first appearance in Longshot number three. And just FYI, when we get to uh, Jubilee's bedroom, Longshot does make another appearance in stuffed animal form. So, she, she always seemed to kind of like him in the original run as well. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, but you are right. We do get a call back to... Uh, when we first met X Factor with Forge at that point, since Forge is going to be in this episode, and then we get another call back to when uh, Professor X was trying to get uh, use his uh, tele- telekinesis powers to, or to me telekin telekinesis, yeah, telekinetic powers to get into the Hellfire Club, and you see Emma Frost in the Hellfire Club and get that uh, steel wall shut down as Emma shuts him off from uh, spying on them. So now I wonder if Emma Frost is going to show up soon. I've been wonder I've been wondering that too, in the sense of like with the episodes we have left and that we know we're getting a part two to life death. Um, I kind of have an idea of what next week's gonna be based on the hints they dropped in this episode. I don't know how much room we got left unless they're gonna be heavily featured in the um, the end. Yeah, we'll 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 find out. But they're definitely. It, it feels like they're not. They're putting stuff in there for a purpose. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we still got the call back to the Phoenix. So for. You know, we keep doing that at that point. But all right. So the first part, Motendo sh- uh, looks about the uh, Jubilee's 18th birthday. So everyone's celebrating that. Um, I did like the interaction that uh, Gambit trying to uh, offer Rogue coffee yes. and uh, Magneto beat him to it. And Gambit asking him that if he's taking orders, he can get a cappuccino. And Magneto responds in only perfect Magneto way. I give orders. I don't take them. That was a good response. That that was funny. I and you know you feel a little bad for Gambit there, but it was a good interaction. And I'm like, all right, that's a point to Magneto on this round. Yeah, um, you, you know it's interesting that the team really wants to do something nice for <laughs> for Jubilee, and uh, while Magneto just wants to saying, no, we got to prepare if Mister Sinner's coming back. We're going to the danger room. That's where she can spend her time. That's right. That way she has more birthdays. <laughs> Yeah, she wants to live, right? Especially I mean, that, Wolverine. Wolverine being so like high up on, yeah, let's get the kid to do something nice. It's like, who? Where, where's Wolverine? That's not the normal Wolverine I expect. Yeah, it, Wolverine said something about Beast that I thought was funny too. I'm, I'm, it's like poster child for Rogaine or something like that. Whatever the line <laughs> was, it, it was pretty funny. It was just unexpected from Wolverine. Yeah, it, it definitely was. But so when Jubilee comes down, she wants to go to the arcade and. <laughs> Um, even Morph makes a crack that doesn't go the right way. He makes a joke about Magneto's parents didn't get him a pony for his birthday. Magneto says, my parents died when I was a child. Like, ooh. Yeah, ouch, Morph, <laughs> ouch. Right. Way, to, way to bring it up, the guy who survived the Holocaust, man, about his parents, jerk. Yeah, and Morph should have known that. Just which he's all, We know he doesn't have the best comedic timing as far as uh, reading the mm-hmm. room goes, but, man, just I would just... Magneto's off limits. You never mess with them. Yeah, and so obviously the arcade uh, birthday party is not going to happen. She goes up to her room, and Roberto's up there. I was like, man, these are progressive people just letting a, a, a at this school having a, a boy in a Jubilee's room. I mean, I, I don't think they asked permission. They're asking yeah, forgiveness on that. <laughs> yeah, um, her room is, uh, is all 90s teenagers uh decked out she's even got like kind of a bruce lee inspired poster in her room 
Uh, she mentions that Scott and Jean are at the UN negotiating Genosha joining the UN, which is where I think that's where our next episode is headed. I, I, I bet you're right, because they referred to that in, uh, was it last week or the week before also, that Genosha joining the UN was yep. coming down the pipe. Yeah, so I, I think we're going to get that and see exactly where uh, Scott and Jean are in their uh, rekindling relationship. If you believe Mojo and what he says, he says they're in divorce court. <laughs> I know, yeah, the hints of towards the future. Now, she does notice a video game system in her room. She said that, oh, maybe these were the surprises they mentioned. And what video system does she have? Yeah, the Motendo. And, you know, it, basically like these weird tentacles come out and like met metallic tentacles grab onto the guys grab onto to roberto grab onto jubilee and sucks him into the video game world yeah i when i paused that, i was curious to see like what it modeled after the like the controllers in the console look like they're from a genesis yeah uh, Sega, the, for sure yeah the logo is similar to nintendo now the video game cartridge is definitely a tip of the hat to the genesis x-men game which was phenomenal in the day I, uh, I enjoyed the game, but I was terrible at it. Terrible at it. Yeah. Now, it, in the actual like in the actual game world, there's several tips of the hat to the old X Men arcade game. Yes, which uh, I believe I know like there was home versions or whatever. But I, somewhere along the way, it's published by Konami. So if you don't know what it is, if you just Google X Men Arcade Konami, you'll find picture this this game, and it was so much fun. So mm. many quarters at the local pizzeria place got got spent on that game and you know they had the four person one or the six person one where you could play get enough people to play as the entire x-men squad if you've ever seen pride of the x-men mm -hmm. it's it's th this game is that episode like it's taking you through that story however what and, i never uh, what i never liked about playing the game is like particularly with storm like to use her powers it would drain her life force so you'd only like ever really get to do punches and kicks with her and then only uh only when you really needed to use her mutant powers you had yeah. to um, I personally always like to play as Colossus and Dazzler yeah. because they had such a big area of effect, but the game, what about your love for Cyclops. Well, I like him, but he wasn't as effective as the other two in this game, but the, the, the game, I, so much fun. There was a very brief time. It was actually available as an app on the iPad and yep, it's I been completely, that. completely pulled now. So even if you had it in your purchase history, you can't get it. They completely pulled it, but it, I, I would play that game today if I could. I do. I have the ability to play it because I modded uh, my my mini Super NES. So very, I have very, every very cool. I, I have every single game known to Super Nintendo on there. Yep. And, that, and it was on there. there. It was yep. on there. So so I I, I never I never owned a copy of it like at home. Like as a kid, I don't even think I realized it had come out. I just I knew it as a game at the arcades, and that's where I played it. Yeah, I, that's where I. It first probably played it would have been cheaper for me to have just gotten it at <laughs> home. Yeah. But still, that would that would ruin the the ruin the whole thing. But that yeah, that was a lovely trip down memory lane for both of us. For sure. But uh, but yeah, the, them being taken into the video game that is definitely a big homage to the movie Tron. Mm -hmm. So they wake up and uh, Roberto is taken by a sentinel, much like how King Kong grabs a woman out of the building in Jubilee. Is that what is that what you thought of King Kong and I thought of King Kong. See, I thought of the the Night of the Sentinels Part One when the Sentinel grabs Jubilee out out of her bedroom. True, and, you're and right. First, yeah. that, that's what I thought they were doing, and because like there's moment like if you look at it, they're reliving moments of Jubilee's history. You're right. You're right. I, I'm an old hat, so I mean, I I see connections where there probably are no connections at that point. You know what? Both can be true. Both can be true. I do like that uh, how easily Jubilee takes them down, takes down the Sentinel. Then the uh, lovely friends of humanity come at, come after them, and then Roberto finds a payphone, and upon using it, transport them out of there like in the Matrix. Matrix, and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I love it. Yep. So they are taken to a new level, modeled after Genosha, and Jubilee talks to him about their previous time there and we do actually see blob and sunfire doing exactly what they did in that episode and that original episode we'll call slave island battle she battles back some soldiers successfully and then a mass person arrives to assist them but they're behind this invisible wall so they can't like get after them and so we'll we'll talk about who that character is later on yes yes so then we reveal who's behind this all big surprise it's ever loving mojo but he looks different. 
Yeah, he 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 got on uh, Weight Watchers. It looks like. Yeah, he made a comment about getting some nips, getting some tucks, and it, he's <laughs> skinny. Like yeah. it's it's weird. And I'm I'm gonna be honest. I was like, okay, I can roll with this, but I'm not loving the character design here. And later, you pretty much they they don't spell it out for you, but they pretty much tell you what's happening. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting because he does go yeah. back to his more natural state. Yeah, he says he's lost weight because ratings are down. So Mojo really does feed off the ratings. So if the ratings are high, everyone's feeding off him. He gets big and fat. If they're down, then, you know, he gets thinned down. Now, one thing that bothered me in the original show, and it's a very big nitpick, and you say, man, I'm such a nerd, um, that even though in the show, just like in this series, like he's got the wires keeping his eyes open. Like if you go back to X-Men 97, he still was blinking. This one, they fixed that. He was never blinking in this episode. I was gonna say, I'd have to go back and look at those older episodes. Yeah. So, again, nitpicky nerd at that point. But so, it, but he also makes another another claim that if they die here, they die in the real world, much like also in The Matrix. Yes, which part of me wonders, could he back that claim up? But it doesn't matter because Jubilee and uh, Roberto, they believed it. So that's really all that matters. Yeah, and we get the – no one wants to watch the shows that he tried to do, like Who's the Boss? Well, it's, it's referencing Magadito now in charge. Mm-hmm. A different world. You got a new team involved. Yep. And then, like you said, Divorce Court, Summers versus Gray. Summers no one wants to watch Gray. that. They're very boring, very procedural. Yeah, it should have said Summers versus Prior. <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be even better. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> no. No, it's not. Not for no, me anyway. not at all. <laughs> Um, I do like the player select screen. We do get Colossus and another magic sighting and then so on. Yes. Yep. I know we have a question coming up about that, so I'll, I'll, I'll hold do. off on that. Uh, so she agrees to compete because what other choice does she have? And they're transported to another level, as you said, homaging X-Men, the arcade game. The The first stage is entitled Dystopian Street, and they and, and homaging... Uh, another game called Streets of Rage. And I love how they pan down and transport in, kind of like TMNT, Turtles in Time. Uh, that's another oh, love yes, game. Yes, classic. I, li- I did like how the game, the, these sections of the game, when they were in like that side-scrolling moment, it was like a four-by-three screen with just yes. bits of you know like a, the character poster art or whatever on the sides. Mm-hmm. That was a nice touch. Yeah, I like doing that. They do that a lot on the Switch, too, with the older games as well. So I, mm-hmm. I like how they do that. And you did see a, a poster in the background homaging Days of Future Past. Yep, yep. Saw that one. Caught that as well. We see Jubilee taking the characters down. Very, I, I really, even though I was wondering how much they were going to do the pixelated art, I like that we got to see what the audience was seeing them in pixelated form. They did a real good job with that. I was surprised at how easily Jubilee seemed to take things down. I was yeah. like, she, she's real. I mean, she, sure, she's come a long ways, but she's taking these things down like they're no problem. I was a little well, whatever, that. whatever the version of the uh, what Konami is uh, for this game at that point. I mean, they have the Konami code. I mean, you could do whatever you want with that code. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Yeah, that's a that's a classic. The, yes. the y- younger listeners have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. They'd say, "What did Chris lose his mind?" Uh, many times, but now is not one of them. So, but what I even more what I liked, they got they digitized the X Men '97 theme. You gotta pay te- pay attention to that you'll you'll hear it. You'll hear it, yeah. So Mojo Mojo's getting he gets bigger very quick because the audience is loving it. You know Mojo's doing Twitch in '97. Twitch wasn't a thing then. Look, he's 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 uh ahead of the game in '97. Ahead of his time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Jubilee, Jubilee wins that level, and they are both transported to the Savage Land level. And during that level, Sauron, a.k.a. Carl Lycos, shows up and starts draining Jubilee's life. And Jubilee looks like she's if she's not careful, she's going to die. Then all of a sudden, she gets life back. Someone gets gives enters a cheat code, and who uh, seems to be helping him out in this one? You know, we... It, it... They kind of alluded to it being Spiral a couple times. Like, is it, was, it, is it yeah. Spiral? But it's Spiral this time. It, it's like, is it Spiral or is it our, our masked friend? I don't, you know, I don't know. Took yeah, it a Spiral? I, I question. Yeah, this it. time, yeah. this time was Spiral. 
I was because especially when we where we get spiral at the end, but the way she was working it, he was like, I don't know what's going on, you know, trying to find a way to get one over on her boss that she doesn't like much of. So the final level, they go to Asteroid M, also that was in the game, and Jubilee has to face Magneto, the level's boss, and she starts seeing like we would play in video games patterns for the boss, and she waits for an opportunity to strike, and she does and takes him down. However, Roberto is hurt very badly and appears to be dying. So what happens? Does does he die, Brent? D- no, is Roberto like, no more? Well, what do you do if you need another life in a video game? You you get an extra life. <laughs> and who and, and this they should have just had someone put a quarter in. <laughs> That's what they should have. Done. <laughs> that would have been good, yeah, too. So, yep, the mass figure appears, lay uh, drops an extra life, and she puts it on the chest, revives them, and they're grabbed and sent, and they all of a sudden disappear deep within the game. And the masked individual reveals herself to be the digital version, an older version of Jubilee. Now, her name is Absiska, who is actually a character in the comics who is an older version of Jubilee, who serves Mojo. And in this show, which was a very nice touch, voiced by the original Jubilee actress, Allison Court. I I did appreciate that they did that. Um, She's obviously not voicing Jubilee for for the primary show yep. for X-Men 97. Uh, but because they wanted, she wanted someone of Asian descent, Asian descent to do it is what I read, but yes. it was nice that they found a way to give her a little cameo. They did. And, um, and she says that, that she was used, she was the, used to test the game out and she is the last one left in the beta test because Mojo tried to delete them all and she's escaped. She's, and you know, again, it's a very similar, not necessarily, you know, again, the character exists in the comics. It's an older version of Jubilee. Now, this is a kind of a big message, and it's kind of a nice in the sense of her passing the torch back to, you know, our new voice actress for Jubilee. And she's also sending her message, too, saying, you need to do some growing up. You need to let go of this past. But still, don't forget, video games are still cool. And she says this. In the middle of a revival of a show from the 90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which let go I'm of like, the past. Let go of the past. Grow up. Okay, I'm going to watch my cartoons that I watched as a kid, but you got it. <laughs> I'm going to be like Homer Simpson and watch those cartoons. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so the final boss ends up being Mojo, and Older Jubilee displays some new... I think I, I would love to see Jubilee finally take on these powers because this, this is... Definitely some ways that Jubilee can be more, uh, just helpful, more, be- more helpful, help- helpful. Yeah, instead you of know, just being a an annoying more than light the show. show. Yeah, it, yeah. But it, it was weird because it's like, why? Why does a digital replica made by Mojo? How does he know what she's going to be able to do as she's older? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. A little bit of a stretch, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're able to defeat Mojo. Um, they get transported back in the room and she kisses Roberto and Spiral looks to be taking over for Mojo. And that is it for Motendo. Yep, pretty much. Like I said, this was the one that's like, I, I like the the video game references, the arcade game references. The the rest of it is just, eh, but honestly, like Jubilee was never my favorite character. I don't mind her in like team up situations where the rest of the X-Men are there. But when she's one of the major ones, it's it's not usually my favorite. I, there is an episode where she teams up with Colossus to take on Omega Red yeah. in the original run. And I do like that, but it's, it's really more uh, Colossus bringing it up for me. Um, but it, Jubilee's fine. Not surprised she got an episode here. Yeah, I mean, they've always been one of those. It's been a staple of the show for a while. There's always going to be some sort of Jubilee episode, some yeah. better than others. Uh, but yeah, so we head to the next part, Life Death Part 1, uh, with Storm coming to grips with losing her powers. And like in the comics, this arc, um, after she shot with a depowering gun that, in the comics, Forge developed. Now we see Forge has a cabin in the desert and is making chili for them to eat. And uh, she tells Forge, um, excuse me, uh, Forge tells her that when she asked about, you know, his uh, his hand and his and his leg, he said he lost he lost it uh, during a war. He didn't go into what war was it, but in the comics, he lost it in Vietnam. Yeah, and this this one I enjoyed quite a bit more. I, I I've been you know waiting to see what's going to happen with Storm, how 
what path is she? Because I, I think we all know she's going to get her powers back, right? And it's probably going to be an epic moment when it happens. If that bring show them the mm-hmm. forecast or bring the forecast moment from the first episode was anything, but it's like how they're going to do it. So bringing Forge in, you know, I, I didn't expect him at the end of last week, and then here we have him. And the Forge continuity is a little weird as far as his age goes with yeah. Days of Future Past, but. I, I just look at it as the days of future past timeline is an alternate future and forge is a little younger in that particular timeline. Like that's my, my head canon for it. You got to just let that go. I think for to, to enjoy these stories. Yeah. And especially kind of like where we are continuity wise in the sense of, is he still leading X factor? Cause I mean, there's pictures there of it. So what is his status yeah. with the team? I would like to see X factor. Yes, I would too. Um, he does talk about how his abilities allow him to use more of his brain than the normal human to create things he never would have imagined. And you get this nice, lovely sequence of them riding off together and uh, Storm kind of doing her, like, you know, I'm free and getting that and then almost goes over the over a cliff. And, you know, she, how, she knows how fast she makes a comment that she knows how fast the weather can change. And so as they walk through his house, we see some interesting pictures. We see the pictures of X-Factor that in that photo has Quicksilver, Havoc, Polaris, uh, Strong Guy, Wolfsbane, and Multiple Man. And see him with his, in his army uniform, and he's with some interesting individuals. One of the individuals in that photo is Dr. Adler. He says Dr. Adler is the one who took his designs. Dr. Now, Adler. if you remember, in the original mm-hmm. series, we met a version of Dr. Adler that Mystique was portraying. So... We assume that Mystique killed the real Dr. Adler, who was trying to develop a mutant mutant cure, but never did it. Now, the other person, it is hidden, kind of. The other person that is nearby, if you look at they do just enough for those of us who pay attention to the comics. We know who this person is, and we don't see a face. Like I said, we just get part of the body. It is the infamous vil- ex-villain Bastion. So Bastion. Yes. Bastion in the comics was the leader of Operation Zero Tolerance that came after um, the Onslaught saga. And it saw the government using the Sentinels to hunt down all mutants with the Sentinels. Now, Bastion, for many, for, for a while, people thought he was human. He was not. He was actually a combination of Master Mold and Nimrod. So my question is, are they basically saying that Forge also helped cre- un- knowingly or unknowingly create the Sentinels? You know, I think that's a reasonable assumption to take. I mean, he, at somewhere, I think he had a hand in it. Like mm-hmm. the, because everybody using the the inhibitor collars was also involved with Sentinel Tech. They were all right there together. So yes, I do. I do believe that somewhere along the line, Forge unfortunately had a hand in doing that. And if that's true, that does make the future days of future past much more tragic for Forge specifically. Yeah, it it does, and and again, he's kind of been one of these, and we kind of see him kind of take that line. It's like I never intended to do that. Um, so we got a lot of questions there, and you know, he he does admit, he says, you know, I when I was going for the ride, he says, I I just needed some inspiration. Now I figured out the missing piece of this machine to hopefully restore your powers. So he puts her in this machine. She, he trusts her, or she trusts him. Some interesting things happen. She comes out, tries to use her powers, tries to make those, <coughs> excuse me, the the phrase like, you know, when the elements come to me, let the, you know, the breeze, nothing happens. And they, as a cruel joke, the, the trees look like they're rustling, like she's controlling. No, it's just a bunch of birds. So, you know, cruel, cruel, cruel joke at that point. Mm-hmm. So she's even more devastated now that that it didn't work and forge then ha- admits that he had worked with the government when he was very desperate and developed the early versions of the depowering collars because the government wanted to have a device to take away dangerous mutant abilities he says that they took his rough ideas adler did and then developed the collars and he and that's what basically the executioner took the collars and put it into the gun to take away her power. So in this version of Forge, he didn't never he didn't develop the depowering gun. He just happened to he, develop the collars. He started the dominoes that led to it. He unlocked yep. the ability for them to get there. And it, it man, that that really seems especially because he was 
I mean, he was for me, for, for, no pun intended, whatever, pun intended. He was <laughs> forging a relationship with Storm. And, you know, they, they have history in the comics. And it, things could have gone nicely for him until he, I mean, he was honest at least, but what you got to respect. But uh, just he, he got taken advantage of. He was at a weak moment in life. And it's, it's just a shame the way it went down. Yeah. And especially, you know, so Storm, you know, can't stand to look at him runs out of the house and then she even though he professes her love to her so we don't even really know how much time has gone by either so we don't know if this is like a day a couple of days a week a month nobody knows the time is kind of it, like it's not this clear one. like I, as i'm watching it the first time as i watched it i was like is this all like a day and a half like it seems super <laughs> quick and i questioned it more the second time I'm like well maybe they're just moving really like having little time jumps. I, I almost think they should have showed us something, you know, like three days later, four days, like given us little time jumps to show us that like forge had been at it for a little while. Yeah. And especially like in the comics version of life death, like they're in like a holographic, like penthouse, like he's got these projections all over the place of, of nature and things like that. So who knows? This could be a whole projection too. Uh, but as she runs off, she she she's been making comments about this owl always following them around well they you know she runs off and then all of a sudden falls and lands back into the house crashes back in the house and i was kind of like what just happened yeah that was really like it was almost awkwardly done it's like mm -hmm. if that had happened in the motendo episode you wouldn't have thought twice about it but in this which was supposed to be you know in their real world it was more more of a surprise and i assume we'll learn more about what happened i will tell you my first thought was shadow king the shadow king was something yep. something to do with with what's going on here because we've seen the history that in this show shadow king has with storm yep and, and that was the first thought uh, of mine but i also started thinking about that this character is a deep cut character that actually could be something other than shadow king because even when this monster kind of owl creature comes out um even for it says get away demon get away this is also a character that's connected if they're going to do this this is a very deep cut forged enemy called the adversary such a boring name i'm sorry um, so so in the comics forge when he was in in uh what was it when he was in in, in war at that point he basically uh called brought forth using a Native American incantation to help him survive the war, inadvertently bringing a demon creature into our world that became the adversary and has taken on different forms throughout its, you know, battles with Forge. So it could be Shadow King or it could be the adversary. It, it, like you said, it's got the, the most creative name of uh, a villain well, it, at that point. It, it almost depends on which one are they attacking. Like we saw it was Storm who was brought back, but are the, is this person going after Forge? It's probably adversary from the comics, yeah. which they also basically named it adversary in the yep. show. That's true. It, if it's going after Storm, it's probably more likely Shadow King. Watch it be both of them. But right now, I I, I think you're pro my first thought was Shadow King, but I think the way you were thinking makes a little bit more sense, especially with them using using the name adversary, that yeah. they're probably pulling more from that side of things. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have to see in two episodes. We'll get the conclusion of Life, Death, Part 2. So like I said, we go, we're, we're taking a, a break with the next episode. It's called Remember It. And like I said, I think the way they've dropped the hints of Genosha, Gene, Skyclops being out there as well. You know, I think we're going to get a, a seeing of what's going on in Genosha. Plus, we've seen sequences in the trailers uh, for the show before it premiered of what I thought was going to be Genosha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, maybe some Morlocks because, you know, Magneto sent them there, right? If that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, absolutely. And if they've put out a trailer or anything for next week, I don't know. I haven't watched it. So I haven't watched it either. So I, I don't watch any of those. So, but all right. So, uh, so episode four, uh, I know we've got a question about where we ranked you. So we're going to kind of hold off our kind of like official rankings of these at that point, but just thoughts on this one. Like you said, did you want to okay. give a, do you want to hold off on the rating number also? 
Yeah, sure. Let's hold off on them. Uh, well, okay. well, let's give our yeah, let's give our yeah, we can do our ratings. That's fine. okay. Well, my mine I came to the conclusion pretty easily. I'm going to call it a seven point five. I'm going to give a seven to. Well, I'm going to give 6.5 to the Jubilee style and then bump it up to whatever averages out to 7.5 for, I didn't do the math, for the Storm one. Because I, like, I did like, like the Storm one quite a bit more. Why, why do you keep trying to bring math on the show? Again, I, I'm not. That That's why I'm, not I, am, math I am actively not doing the math. There, there's, been <laughs> enough, there's been enough math involved today. I'm not doing more math. And it... It just overall, I was I just enjoyed the storm stuff a lot more, and it's funny because the discourse I've seen online has been very like one way or the other. People are like, I like storms, it, but I didn't like Jubilee. Or I really like the Jubilee store, but I didn't like storm. And I just, it's so funny. It's it easily has been the most dev- divisive episode yet. Yeah, it's definitely divisive in the sense of, but like I said, I even thought about last week. I, I think I even said it too. Like I could predict like there would be an episode of we would be okay pumping the brakes a little bit have a little interlude we've been hitting it hard and heavy yes. with three episodes this was this, that this, for sure this this was that and i'm i'm between a 6.5 and a 7 okay you know okay just not bad not not it's definitely not a it's definitely not the highest episode but it's definitely not the the worst thing i've ever seen either it was it, it, it was it, what it was it's not one i'm likely to revisit very often out outside of like full full watches of the show yeah especially with you know maybe watching life death all together when it finally drops yeah depending on how that goes that that might be fun to do yeah so all right so let us head into the news and uh yeah so we got one news item this week and, and it dropped the other day and it was kind of we hadn't we had we hadn't been on Fantastic Four watching a little bit, so I mean they gave us a Fantastic Four, so it's like <laughs> all right, whatever. We got what we wanted, right? Well, th- this particular item gives us confirmation as well. Yes, I'm, exactly. I'm going to need your help with it. You know, I've done a little reading, but I'm going to need your help with this one. <laughs> yeah. So the Fantastic Four, uh, this is coming from an exclusive coming from Deadline, has found their Silver Surfer. So with all four actors of the main cast of the uh, Fantastic Four named at that point and officially released by Marvel. Sources now tell Deadline that Emmy winner Julia Gardner is set to play the iconic comic book Marvel uh, Marvel Studios the Fantastic 4 Silver Surfer. Um, as we as they announced before, Pedro Pascal, Vanessa Kirby, Joseph Quinn and Eben Moss Bacharach uh, are the main players of this one. Uh, Matt Shackman is directing Fantastic Four with a with a strip from with a script from Josh Friedman, and it is set to bow in theaters July twenty fifth, twenty twenty five. While plot details are are uh, unknown, sources have told Deadline that Gardner will be playing the Shala Ball version of the Silver Surfer from the comics. So you know, which there was get... a version of that character in the main six one six too. Yes, there was a major to be buried in six one six. She never turned into the Silver Surfer. No, but so, I saw some. I and I didn't know this before today. Some like gold pit. Like she looked the same, but gold and was a herald of Galactus. Yes. So this version of the Silver Surfer of Shalabal is the character that they're kind of tipping the hat to and probably taking uh, homages from is from Earth nine 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 seven, also known as Earth X. So in this storyline, uh, it was um, yeah, it's one of my favorite story storyline trilogies, the Earth X saga. So Shala Ball, this is a little bit of of history from the comics. So she was a lover of Norn Rad, also in the comics as well in Main Six One Six, and Norn Rad in Earth X was Silver Surfer. Following the destruction of Galactus, the Surfer realized that Galactus had been necessary to the comic to the cosmic balance. So together with a high evolutionary. They convinced Franklin Richards to allow the evolutionary to use his equipment to advance Franklin's powers to uh, him to assume the mantle of Galactus. Guided by the surfer, Franklin got forgot about his past and came to believe that he was Galactus. The new Galactus allowed the surfer and Shalabal to be reunited, imbuing her with the same exact powers of the power cosmic that empowered the surfer. Uh, Brent, do you mind looking for an uh, image we can use to so uh, for those on YouTube who want to see it? Um, and making them the twin heralds. Well, when Galactus was called back to Earth uh, to battle the Celestials, Shalabal was killed in battle. The devastated silver surfer would mourn Shalabal on Earth after the Celestials' defeat with uh, within the Human Torch erected in New York City. 
When the surfer sacrificed his life to give Marvell the power cosmic, his soul was transported to the realm of the dead. And there they reunited with Shalabal, and their whereabouts are unknown, as they have been since the death of death. And so, as if for those on YouTube, Brent is displaying Silver Surfer with Shalabal, the other Silver Surfer. So, first off, um, I'm a big fan of of uh julia gardner i'm a big fan of her from ozark and uh she's done a number of others with um you know with the recently starring in the royal hotel next up for her she's got uh rolling in the wolf band and she's also in the paramount thrill apartment 7a i'm also if i'm not mistaken i think she's also in a madonna biopic and she's a dead ringer for madonna in the early years you're muted. I'm Hold on, sure, friends. There we go. I'm pretty sure the only thing I knew her from... Yeah, sorry about that. I was having a problem with my mic. Um, pretty sure the only thing I knew her from is Ozark, which I never I never actually finished that show. I, I really need to go back to it and finish Gosh, it because so I've heard it's great. But um, looking through her IMDb, that was the only one that really jumped out at me. Like... I've seen a good chunk of it and definitely more than like several episodes of the show, probably two seasons, maybe. I don't know how many seasons it was, but regardless, um, this is for me, mostly one of those trust in trust in what people are like in Sarah Finn, the casting director for Marvel and trust in a lot of excitement that I saw that she was joining the MCU online today. Yeah, a absolutely. The casting, casting for a lot of these, you know, again, falls down to the casting director, and thankfully, I've been saying it for so long at this point, cast and directors will be coming into the Oscars as well, thankfully, in, in the next couple of years. Yes. So, so yeah. So, it, and you know what? For those people that are saying, Silver Surfer's got to be a man, got to be a man. No, they don't. No, they don't. Sorry. Go, it, go, go cry about th it. This was point. unexpected to by me, but I saw it and I'm like, okay, that's cool. And she's not Norn Rad. Like, we still probably will get a version of Norn Rad in this. Yeah. They're just switching roles. That's fine. Nothing nothing about the Silver Surfer says Silver Surfer always has to be a man. No. Nothing says it has to be white. Nothing says anything about it. It's the essence of the character. We could easily get them both. And, and, and you know what? The MCU has never been the one saying we've got to do exactly the same thing in the comics. They're taking an idea from the comics and making it its own. Right. Which nothing. they've done since day one. Exactly. And again, as we keep on reminding you, if this is not your cup of tea at that point, this idea, guess what? All those comics are still there on the shelves or in the or in your iPad, just waiting for you to read them. Now, I will say, and I will give a recommendation, not for Shalabal. If you want to know more about Shalabal, uh, read the Earth X trilogy. It, it, I, I definitely, it's a fun little uh, romp into a different dystopian future of uh, the Marvel Universe. But if you want to read an outstanding, fun Silver Surfer run, read Dan Slott's run with Malik Allred and uh, Laura Allred on the Silver Surfer. Yeah, I've read that one. It's really good. One of the one of the best love stories in the Marvel universe. It's, the art's amazing. The story's outstanding. It'll it'll definitely give you a little give you some uh, some tears coming down at the end of it. Slott has pretty much said he thinks it's the best thing he's ever done. Yeah. I, I, I could uh, I could understand that he's he's a very big uh, proponent of that series so but all right so we'll see you know this was unexpected but hey I'm here for it you know it does beg the question at this point Brent you know are are we you know the idea of now we're really much confirming Galactus being in the Fantastic Four I I mean not technically by the definition of the word but it sure looks that way if you're going to include, if you're going to go so far as to include any version of the Silver Surfer, Surfer of a Herald of Galactus, you're going to see Galactus, right? You're going to yeah. see Galactus. And can I just say there, there was a Fantastic Four poster put out today with the Human Torch on it that said Happy Four Four Day. And yeah, I saw that. And that was it official. Looks awesome, and to me, it sure makes it look like it is also going to be like it's more evidence it's going to be in the past. Like if yeah. you look at the skyline, it's more evidence of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Julio in the chat saying right now there's a, there are a bunch of YouTube videos about how casting female are Silver Server woke. Yeah, they're trying to get are. that out. Yeah, they're trying to get the algorithm. They're there to get the clicks and everything like that, and uh, they won't be getting my clicks. No. Um, 
Amari Daniels saying Julia Gardner was great in the Royal Hotel last year with Jesse Henwick. Oh, yes. I've got to okay. check that out. Silver Surfer Iron Fist team up. Let's do it. Yeah, there we go. So she's already met the, met Colleen Wing. There we go. You know, I've, I've kind of want to propose this idea. Like, you know, with this Silver Surfer, the idea maybe behind it is that Galactus is not a world devourer. What if he's a universe devourer? I, who, who, someone else was talking about that. That I, I don't remember where I've, I've heard some elsewhere somewhere. Um, I might've been screen crush regardless, whatever it yeah. was. It's, it, it, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was, I've been, wa- I've been watching a few things. You're right. It was uh, Ryan area over screen crush, but that is a, that is a nice way to, uh, I guess, update the story a little bit and tie it more into the multiverse saga. So mm-hmm. I, I, I'm open to the idea. Yeah, and I think what Ryan Arrow was saying over at Screen Crush was just the idea of that in order to save, like in order to for her universe to be saved, she would be the person trying to, much like the Silver Surfer was, mm-hmm. finding worlds for him to devour, in this case universes, in order to keep her universe safe. Yeah. And like you said, brings in the multiverse saga. So could the Fantastic Four's universe be doomed, and that's how they jump into our universe. I'm interested in the idea for sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we'll have to see exactly how this goes down. But, you know, light news week, but a nice news item to talk about at this point. Yep. All right. So we're going to take our last ad break before we get into listener feedback, factor fictions, and comic book clubs. So as you know, listeners, these ads help keep the lights on in the Geek Ultimate Alliance network. We don't get to choose what ads come on, and they can be a bit loud. Give you that three count before they come on. Three, two, one. We'll be right back. And we are back. All right, Brent. Uh, you, oh, as always, put out the Spidey signal for questions. We got a bunch of them this week. So what do we got? Yeah, and most of it's actually X-Men 97 related. Uh, right. Starting off with the Brockman, what other characters or storylines do you want to see adapted for X Men ninety seven? I've thought of two things when I first read this. Yep, I will. Uh, I will say Fatal Attractions and oh, Age one. of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. I thought of they could do a nice little two parter for that. Um, and someone could say, "Well, we've kind of already done that." I said, "Yeah, but I want a real Age of Apocalypse." I mean, did they? Did they? It's not to say no. Like they they could do one like the comics where you see all the different versions of the characters and stuff. Speaking of it, uh, this is more towards his other things. What other characters? I'd like to see the Exiles show up. Bunch, yeah. you know, I, I bring them up every chance I get because I just really love that book. But just a bunch of universe hopping X Men characters, universe hopping mutants, including Blink from Age of Apocalypse, and in fact, do Age of Apocalypse and then do the Exiles I, and have them show up for an episode or two. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Now I know that you know. It's coming to an end, but it would be cool to see. Even they did it in the com, and they did it in a, a comic series. But uh, I'd like to see maybe in season two, maybe try their uh, version of the Krakoa era. Yeah, yeah, that that's there's definitely got to be stories there they can mine. Mm-hmm. So. All right, from uh, Phil, can you rank? If you can rank the first four episodes of X Men ninety seven, what's your order? Why? All right, why don't you go first? Uh, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I guess worst to best, uh, worst. I mean, it, you've heard like it's got to be Motendo slash um, Life Death is is my number four ranking, and then I'm gonna actually put the second episode, which uh, its name is escaping me, in my third slot, and then my second slot is the pilot or the first episode of X Men ninety seven, followed by our uh madeline Pryor episode last week um as for why why i just the madeline Pryor stuff. i just thought it was so much fun one i like clones i just always like clone stories but i just thought it was really fun visually it was so awesome to see that stuff the and then in that first episode i did really love what they did with cyclops in it like all the jokes aside that just the whole action in that with cyclops was amazing the wolverine gambit stuff was amazing like it was so much fun to watch that stuff and it just brought me back to where i was you know however many years ago when the original ran run original run was go out so that's why those that's why those rank where they are yep i'm with you with uh my number 4 being uh motendo and life death part 1 my number three is last week's episode. Um, just that that one in 
like I said, I, I my problem necessarily with it is not because not just because I felt the Inferno story was rushed. That's part of it, but also I think the the next two ahead of it were just stronger, and that would be my number two would be the the uh, the first episode, just reestablishing a lot of cool shots out of there. But episode two, Magneto kind of being fully integrated, the the his stuff at the UN, all that stuff like that that was hitting on all cylinders, especially his speech to the UN at that point. That was that was all all such of cool stuff. All right, next up from uh, Frank Television, um, where's Old Lady Jubilee? Where's Old Lady Jubilee? Uh, Old Lady Jubilee is still in Mojoverse. I don't think she is. I think <laughs> she's gone. The video game got destroyed. No. I think she's gone. And an old retro game like that wouldn't be really connected to the network. So maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's just you know what I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take what Spock Spock would uh, you know say, or excuse me, uh, you know Hank McCoy said in uh, you know Wrath of Khan at the end of the movie, saying you know he's not really dead as long as we remember him. So okay, she's not dead as long as we remember her. Fair enough. All right, from uh, Anthony, what's the chance of magic actually appearing in this show for real? There's now been two references, and they even cast someone for the Morph Transformation cameo last week to voice her. I, I want it. I want to see both. I want to see. I want to see magic. I want to see Dark Child. I, I feel <laughs> if it's not this season, I think it'll happen next season. Which, keep in mind, is like already like in product, like deep into production. And yep. so, I, I do think we're going to see her. I don't think they take. I don't know, maybe they would. They did a few times in the first run of the show, but it just seems like more likely, like if they're going to take the time to cast someone to voice, if they're going to take the time to design the character and stuff, that they're going to use it in an episode at some point. And I hope yeah, they do. It, it, hopefully it comes with Colossus. But. Yeah, and they keep saying that they were going to get some more Marvel uh, outside of X-Men uh, cameos coming, so... And then one non X Men related question. Uh, we're going to take a look back at the MCU and history real briefly here. Yeah. Omari Daniels, today is the day. Today is the ten year anniversary of Captain America: The Winter Soldier, which I still think is the best MCU movie. How do you feel about this movie's impact on the MCU ten years later? And what was your initial reaction to the Hydra reveal? Also, on your left. <laughs> Remember that, Mister Hines. Uh, I was. I wish he was here for that. I know. He, I think that's he. He sensed it. He, he he saw Amari's question, and I think that he's like, "That's the real yeah, reason." Yeah, he made he the, made up the family obligations. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's just right now, like like uh, Jerry Seinfeld going, "Brent." So, Chris, I know I know you love the mo movie. If I'm not mistaken, you have it ranked number one. I think it is. it's definitely it is. up it there. Is. What? It is still so one. obviously, you love the movie. How do you feel about the movie's impact on the MCU? I think it was a good, like, kind of next step that the MCU made in the sense of, see, we, yeah, we can do the popcorn movie, but we can do, you know, we kind of had certain, this was kind of my hope is that, you know, the Captain America would be your espionage, spy thriller, kind of like pocket of the universe, political thriller. And it really, I mean, I love Brew Baker's run on the Winter Soldier and, and that whole thing. But my favorite Captain it, America run. It took that idea and then made it work in the MCU in regard to the reveal, like, you know, Brent and I were both huge fans of agents of shield. And so mm -hmm. we kind of were watching that episode in anticipation to go into, um, you know, Captain America and just, and just seeing back then agents of shield had sit well, well, he was yeah. on the show. Mm -hmm. He left to go do the Lumerian star mission, which picked up in the movie. And then obviously, you know, after the events of the movie, yeah. shield fell apart in the show. Yeah. I, that is one, again, it is still my number one. And it, it, that movie is something that I have a big smile on my face because there's so many great scenes in it. it the, in the impact of it, like that was the beginning of the cracks being formed in the MCU with divisions already being seen at that point. And Julio's saying that uh, he was 17 when that, that came out. So, whew, well, dating all of us. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. You know what? We, we, we need the, the young people to come <laughs> into do. this franchise as well to yep. keep it going. Uh, I think it was a super important movie. One, it's obviously a great, great movie. There's a reason why so many people still have it at the top of their list. And I won't argue with a single one of them. There are 
about 25 worst choices you could make in the MCU, maybe more than that, to have at the top of your list. It is a stellar movie, absolutely. I love it every time I watch it. Uh, my wife tells me I should just call it Captain America on your left because I enjoy the on your left stuff so much. <laughs> as far as the impact goes on on the MCU 10 years later, I think it's vital because it was the first pairing of writers Marcus and McFeely with the Russo brothers as directors. And they would go on to do Civil War and, you know, obviously Infinity War and Inga, like their, their run, those, yeah. the four movies that those four men worked on together, like that run is vital. And it, no, may, maybe we can't look at the Winter Soldier to Endgame the same way directly, but it to me, it started that chain. It started yeah. that chain. And I, I still maintain Civil War is the most important narratively story that doesn't have Avengers in the title in the entire MCU. But it doesn't it doesn't get where it does without the Winter Soldier. Like and Winter they, Soldier is super important from that standpoint. And there's so many great kind of like real world tips to the hat too is like surveillance. What do we stop in crimes mm -hmm. before they even start? The idea of like this how isn't much freedom, is, this is fear. Yeah. Yeah. There there are so many great great speeches. Shoot you darn it, guys, you're going to make me want to watch it again. And that's and can, not a bad can, thing. Can, can we just take a moment to acknowledge before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Like the, the whole elevator oh, sequence God. of Captain America running away. I mean, that's that scene is iconic. Just absolutely. I, it is the definition of iconic. And, no, and, and it's the 10 year. And I'm going to be honest. I didn't realize it had been 10 years. I mean, yeah, really. If you ask me, I could tell you it came out in 2014. 2014 was an awesome year for the MCU because we also got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 that year. And if I'm not mistaken, Days of Future Past when the X-Men side came out that year as well. Like it was, I think so. I'd have to fact check that, but it was a good, it was a good year for Marvel. And it, it, it Amari's right. If they're shooting at you, they're bad. If they're shooting at you, they're bad. I go where he goes just slower, right? Like it, it's, it's so, <laughs> it's such a great movie. It did so much. It gave us Sam Wilson, who obviously is still like, he's going to be in the next Captain America. He is Captain America and he's leading yep. the next Captain America project. It's she, I think that movie is super important, and but the biggest impact is pairing Marcus and McFeely with the Russos, at least for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, it's and uh, Julio says, "Yep, X Men came out that year." So it it's there's a lot of good. I like you said until Amar until you said it was a ten year uh, anniversary of it. I was like, man, geez, and I just remember that summer. I just remember coming out of the theater with my friend Doc, and we were just like, "Oh my god!" Like this is a whole new level of the MCU. I want more of this. I, I saw it with Brock and I'm like one little bit of Avengers 1.5, not in a bad way at all. I don't mean that disparaging at all. Just having all these different, not as bad as civil up. war. No, nowhere near to the extent of civil war. No, not even close. Like when civil war came out retroactively, it like lessens that for, it's like eh, Avengers 1.2 maybe, but <laughs> it, it, it definitely lessened that. But it's like, I remember like questioning it with Brock of like, Wait, Avengers just came out. Did I like this movie more already? Like, has there already been a movie that I like more? Like, and it, it it's so good. It's and the, like like we said, the Winter Soldier story. They did such a great job with it. I read once that Ed Brubaker didn't know they were doing this until they announced it. That's how he found out they were doing the Winter Soldier. Which, okay, I I, I don't know if that's the way to do it or not, but pretty. I mean. Pretty awesome. Pretty fun. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, just imagine being the guy who created the Winter Soldier iteration of Bucky, and that's how you found out they're going to use him. And he's still yeah. around in in the movies. Yeah. So, but yeah, any more questions this week? Uh, nope, that'll do it for this week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for those. Phil, Phil, we didn't forget about your question. Yours is coming in post-credits. Well, he had the one, and I, I mentioned, we. I told him on threads we were going to yeah. move move his other one down low. Gotcha. So, all right. Well, thank you all for sending those great questions at that point. So uh, let's get into fact or fiction. So from last week, these were uh, some of mine from last week. So there will be at least one previously announced MCU project that will be canceled before the end of phase six. 85% said fact, 15% said fiction. Anthony DC Outlaw says Armor Wars or Wonder Man for sure. I was like, Wonder Man's currently in production. That that'd be it. That'd be a big shift for them to cancel something that's already in production. Armor Wars is definitely more likely than Wonder Man. But he he hedged. He said both, so he covered his bases. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Tobey Maguire and or Andrew Garfield will voice and or appear as their respective Spider Man in Beyond the Spider Verse. Eighty two percent said fact. Eighteen percent said fiction. 
And number three, we will get an official announcement of the cast of the MCU X-Men before Secret War releases. 64% said fact, 36% said fiction. So those are it. So Brent, you are up this week. I am up. All right. Um, first off, uh, we will see the yellow Daredevil costume again in Daredevil Born Again. Like I our phrase that less awkwardly. That we both got. But yes, like our lovely mine's up mine's on my desk at work. But yes. Nah, okay. That'd be um fun. yes. So basically the 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 cut the yellow costume from She Hulk we will see again in Daredevil Born Again. Yeah, I could see that possibility being a flashback. I'd say I'd say there's definitely a a higher chance than not happening. So yeah, I'd I'd give it a fact. I am actually going to give it a fiction. I don't think we're going to, but I I would like it if we did. But you know, the character they all get so many costumes every time. I'm happy we have it. I'm happy it exists and if if we want to see it again, we got it. But I I feel like they're not going to. I think they're going to go more red more with the red. I think we I think it was when I originally I've had this in my notes forever. Like as a possibility, I've so got a long question next week. It was before they did the whole back to formula on Daredevil. I think it was more likely before they like said yes, we are definitively following up on the Netflix show for what it's worth. But so I'm, I'm going fiction on it. All right, all right. Next up, uh, the Secret Wars movie will have an in canon comic book tie-in. In canon comic book time, so just a comic book that's going to be the prelude. Like truly, to... it could be a prelude, but it's going to be. It's not. It's not. Basically, I know they used to have those ones that were allegedly canon, but you know they had nothing to do with Feige and company. Well, now that Feige is the chief creative officer, I believe is his title. It's. Yeah. I believe they're going to have a canon thing related to it, or at least that's, yeah, that's what my my is. They've got a history of it, so yeah, I'd say. I'd say there's a chance. I'll go. It's it's a it's a light fact, but yeah, there's there's precedent for it. I'm fact on this one. I I, I think it's likely going to happen. Okay. And finally, in the in the movies, and I'm phrasing it that way because we don't technically know for sure yet which one he'll appear in. In the movies, Galactus will have his comic book look, including that helmet. I want to see the hat, man. I want the hat. <laughs> I want the hat. Yeah, we're not going to do fart clouds. We're definitely not going to go the ultimate universe with a bunch of bug-like creatures. I could see a bunch of bug-like creatures being used by Galactus, but I think we will see Galactus. 616, no. helmet, purple Galactus. I'm a fact on it. Yeah, I I, I think the MCU hasn't shied away from too much. Cr- I mean, the fa- here's, the, here's the ways I'm, I'm a fact. We got the Celestials. Right? We're getting exactly. Galactus. We're getting Galactus. And, and there's, so, hey, Celestials. There, there's a Celestial in the middle of the 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 ocean that we still really haven't talked about. So, and, yeah. Celestials showed up. We first saw them in Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, we yeah. first got a first image of them. That was back before, like, Phase 4, when they really seemed, at Phase 4 and on, to be going, like, Forget it. We're going comic booky with this stuff. Like all costumes are just super comic booky. So why do I why do I feel like some like when we got to after Eternals at that point we keep pointing out Celestials, and I feel like that the people meme the Mean Girls saying stop trying to make Celestials happen. It's not going to. I mean that's pretty much what we said about the Inhumans back when they were and Marvel the comics now. was trying and, to do that. And, and the Eternals, according to Bob Iger. Well, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> So, all right, well, I will post those Sunday afternoon, so let your voices be heard. And as we conclude every week, Comic Book Club. Let's head back to, you know, Old Man Logan. So we got issue number 71. And uh, looking at this cover, yeah, Wolverine's... Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, all these bullet holes. Or I do like the, the bullets uh, skin, right this I, I like the skin coming down off his hair at that point. I mean, he, he, he's been through some stuff. It's so gross looking. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we last left off with the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex being uh, venomized and chasing them down. Yeah, which is a cool visual. I, I definitely like seeing the Venom the Venom symbiote there. Um but I like the way they get out of that situation a lot. Emma Frost sends Black Bolt, and apparently they're they're married. And Black Bolt just, just just whispers the word "stop," and it 
blows the symbiote completely off the dinosaur. The dinosaur is probably dead. You don't know. Maybe it's just knocked out. That yeah. symbiote is just scattered all over the ground, not moving. <laughs> really cool. And then Blackwell just puts his fingers over his lip, you know, just give it a little shh. <laughs> like, I just, I was like not expecting that at all. But really cool, really cool moment. Yeah, especially the meeting with uh, Emma Frost and like they make that uh, you haven't you haven't aged like uh, my powers are letting you see what I want you to see. So we really don't yeah. see how old Emma looks right now. Yeah, she's definitely aged. Yeah, we just don't see it. Mm-hmm. But uh, she definitely helps them out, sets them up, and kind of you know repairs the spider buggy. Yeah, which is good because you know. They, they need it to get around and it's helped them out of some scraps and I actually read that wrong at first and said they weren't repairing the spider buggy I'm like wait a minute it's right there on the page what are they talking about but that's okay I, re- I reread it we get this ominous figure we get our first look at doom in this era yeah I, I kind of like his look you know he is missing more of the green that he's known for but it, it, it works for for the for the time for the era as you put it that they're in yeah, we uh, start speeding up because now we're in Osborne Country, Ohio. Then we get to Pim Falls, Connecticut. And, uh, why like why how... is it called Pim Falls? I know, yeah. The next page, we get a huge splash page of uh, the skeleton of Hank Pym in his giant form. Just absurd. <laughs> so huge. But, uh, but yeah, now they're in New Babylon where anything can happen, including a huge statue of the Red Skull. Looks like he's crushing the heroes in his hand. Mm-hmm. Yep, taking out the Avengers, and you, you can make out a few of them who they are based on silhouettes, Captain America, Thor, but it uh, huh, seeing the Red Skull like that, that's just wrong. Yeah, and then they, you know, Hawkeye's going to his deal, and it looks like uh, he's meeting discount Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yes, that's, yes, perfect description. And we finally get an idea of what they've been sending up there, 99 vials of super soldier serum. For 99 members of their Rebel Alliance. And uh, Clint talks his way into getting one of them so he can join. Yep. He wants to join their... They they say they're going to make a new Avengers, and he wants to join them so that he can be a part of it. And they turn around, they're about to shoot him, and they unload on Wolverine, effectively giving us the cover. Yep. And then they they shoot Clint, right? Right in the head. They Well, it first in the chest, and then right in the head. And I'm like, well... Nice knowing you. Got to double tap it, man. You got to make sure he's down. You don't want to zombify him either. That's right. Double tap. Yep. So, but yeah, we we are not in a good place. And uh, I think next week is the penultimate ep- penultimate uh, issue because we got this and then we got the annual after. That sounds right. That sounds right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I think Brendan and I have already selected what we're doing uh, next for this. So, we'll we'll let you know when we're ready to talk about it. Yep. Soon, though. So, but all right. Well, another episode. We got our post credits coming up in a little bit, which I know some people were wondering. There was something else major that you didn't talk about. We know. We know. We... Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So, all right, Brent, tell people how they can follow you. Yeah, Brent Tech Prime on the socials. You know, threads, Twitter, those are the ones I'm on the most, but I am still on te- TikTok technically. Yeah, I have Mastodon and Blue Sky, but I'm never there, let's be honest. Yeah, the only one I don't have is Mastodon, and I think I'm good with that. Well, you can federate threads now if you want, which short version, if you don't know what that means, you can make it so that your post will show up in Mastodon. If someone wants to follow your threads account from Mastodon, that can, I haven't done it yet because it's still in beta, but it's technically an option. Hmm, interesting. Not enough. <laughs> I, I'll uh, eventually do it. I'm just waiting for it to be out of beta because you don't see any of the replies and likes and stuff in threads. Uh, yeah, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. So, but, uh, but yeah, as always, want to thank our official sponsor, Organic Price Books. Use that code MarvelGUA at checkout to get $2 off every single order. Yes, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at Chris Balga. All the socials usually out there. As I said, outside of Mastodon, you can follow my other show, World's Finest True Believers, at Finest Believers. Dropped my newest episode this week, Phil returning and covering Batman and the Outsiders, the first arc of the original run of that series. So a lot of fun on that one. Thank you, Phil, for coming back on. And you can email the show at marvelalliance at uh, gmail.com. You can follow us at Marvel A Podcast on Twitter. You can follow the Geek Ultimate Alliance on Twitter at GUA Pod Network. Feel free to tweet, email, for run of our feedback, ask fact or fiction, to ask questions. Again, you don't have to wait for Brent to send out the Spidey signal. All our DMs nope, are open. Anytime. We will, we will file your question for the next week at that point. Um, you can basically almost get them in right before the show, and we'll pretty much more than likely get them on. If I see it, I'll add it to it. Yep. 
And uh, continue to rate and review the Marvel Line solo feed, the Jew A Network feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcatchers of choice. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us live in the chat. Thank you all for listening. Stay safe out there, everyone. And as Stan the Man would say, Excelsior, true believers. All right, Brent. You know, we, we, we have taken a stance on set photos and things like that, and so that's why we're not putting it in the main show. So if you – we're going to be talking about the recent Daredevil set photos that have come out, and uh, they're pretty telling. They're they're definitely high quality. So if you don't want to know uh, what we're about to talk about, we'll see you next week. Uh, for those of you who want to stick around, let's talk about it. So, uh, Brent, how do you want to talk about – how do you want to go into this? Well, let's 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 go ahead and start with this question from from Phil. Uh, how does it feel to get an exclusive story before major trades get a chance to report? Yeah, how do you like that, Brent? I mean, it was I I did laugh when I saw that. So I that morning, David had sent me a, a screenshot from the Geekverse uh, Discord, which mm-hmm. I'm a member of, but I'll be honest, I'm hardly ever I hardly ever check it. Um, and I I messaged Snell and was like, "Is this real? Like, is this picture real?" And he's like, yeah, it's, it's out there. A little while later, I get that from Phil, or I get a tag from Phil sharing the Variety article about it. And now I'm seeing some other pictures. Later after that, I see some behind-the-scenes videos on TikTok of them basically just running down the street. Like, it, it was nothing, like, super thrilling. It's just so cool to see it in motion. I just tell you, I had the biggest smile looking at these things. Like, these these pictures are so yep. awesome. They're high yep. quality. The Punisher... He's got his variety. He's got his logo, man. Like the Punisher skull is Look there. At that. It's not the Hydra one, which I like, or not the hand one. I do that every time. It's not the <laughs> hand one. I enjoyed the hand story where he was with them, but it's not the hand logo. It's it's the Punisher. And remember, everyone's like, oh, they're Disney's not going to do the Punisher, and they're definitely not going to do. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they're <laughs> doing it. That's 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 Frank Castle right there, and man, it's Tom just Bertha. so so good to see him back together. John Bernthal was very thing. He would only come back if they were going to do it the right way, and uh, it looks like they're doing it the right way. I just love this. Like it's it's Pierre Bernthal. Like he is the Punisher. It it just looks so good. So, I mean, yeah. So I mean, good. you know, the funny thing is, I I would have liked a little credit for you, Brent. Like as revealed on uh, Marvel <laughs> sure, Lines yeah, by no. Brent. By uh, I mean, keep in mind, it was like the. I mean, pretty much we knew it the way we knew that the other Spider-Men were in No Way Home. It's just yep. they hadn't officially announced anything yet. Yeah, and technically they still have it. Like Marvel, no, they hasn't still have said it. Anything. But the fact that Variety is carrying these photos—that's why we're putting them out there. If they were, if we were like from scoopers and things like that, we wouldn't be Plus, displaying it. John Berthall shared a picture on Instagram of yes. himself, Charlie Cox, and Deborah Ann Wool behind the scenes, just sitting in chairs, and that also just brought a nice smile to my yeah, face. Yeah, let's. Let's put that out there for everyone to see while we're at it, as I finagle with. There we go. Yep, there it is. Look at that. Look how happy they all are. As Frank Castle is covered in blood. <laughs> as he should be. Ugh. I just, I, I, I am so excited. I mean, again, they're they're hitting on all the levels at that point. It's going to be really difficult to uh, how this show's not going to hit hard. It, I, it, if I'm being honest, this is the project I am the most excited for. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, sure. It, there's a Spider-Man coming. There's a Avengers Secret Wars, right? But we don't know anything about that stuff yet. And it, it'll change to an extent, but unquestionably right now with what we know that's coming down the pipe, this is the project I am the most excited for. Yep. I, I'm there with you sometime next year. We're going to get it. I do not believe anything that's saying we're going to get it this year at all. I'm sorry, but I don't. No, I I would be shocked. We don't need it. it. We don't need it this year. This will be the big thing for next year. The absolute, I guess if they wanted to start it in December, but I would be absolutely no. shocked. This and is I, this is going to be their premiere show. They're going to put this at the right time to get people tuning in every week. Yeah, yeah. So, but hey, you know what? I just came up with another fact or fiction just based off that idea. So tune well, in next sure, week. Make sure you write it down. I did. I got two ones to write down that I just came up with. So. Tune in, tune in next week where we will uh, we go over episode five of X-Men 97 and see what else news drop. Thank you all. Bye-bye.